Hey everyone, uh, it is GM Josh Friedel here, and uh, presenting you with the GM Choice Lecture. So, once again, it's going to be... And, uh, all right, let me mute myself. <laughs> uh, so, I am reading the chat. Um, so, if you want to do uh, suggestions in the chat and things like that, I'll be asking you questions the whole time and stuff like that. Uh, it's it was pretty crazy at the club today, but we are off and running. So today I wanted to talk to you about a very specific topic and I'm going to present it in kind of a few different ways. Um, and uh, I wanted to start uh, by showing you a piece of this game. This was between uh, Denis Hizmetulin, uh, Russian GM, and Rolf Mamedov, uh, GM from uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, the opening was a King's Indian with C5, and you'll notice how it's not quite a Benoni because the E and C pawns haven't been traded. So it was kind of a, a weird-looking King's Indian um, where Black took on F3, G takes F3. And we're in this position where it's a question of what White should do to uh, continue the attack, which is obviously raging on Black's king. So there, are, I should say that before I go on that there are many, many ways to do this. Um... But there, I'm looking for something in particular. So you're white and you have to continue this attack. What would you do? Yes, Davina. Uh, actually, the uh, the stream I did earlier, uh, for some reason on one of the layouts, the, the video was completely messed up and I was unable to fix it. But uh, yes, we're back to a relatively normal webcam now. So hopefully it won't be too painful. Uh, in any case... Uh, so white to move, and again, like I'm looking for a specific type of idea here. E5 and the idea of taking and F5. This is definitely possible. The one thing I would worry about after something like this would be takes, F5, and even a move like G5. I know this is kind of ugly, but the idea is that this actually kind of stops you up and positionally you're doing great. You have these, these light square control, you have a really crappy G7 bishop, but when your goal is to attack, sometimes you're actually, you're closing things down. So you're getting a positional advantage, but you're sacrificing some of your attacking potential. So that's kind of a potential drawback to that. So I see a suggestion for king h1, rook g1. And that I think is a very good idea, which is what was played. Again, it's not the only way. You could play with f5, for instance, uh, immediately without playing e5 first. Because the bishop on the long diagonal doesn't actually do that much. And the idea of f5 is you're trying to just crack at these pawns, maybe even f4 and takes next. Maybe king h1 can follow. And if g5 now and you go back, it's not the same as if you've sacrificed your e-pawn. It's a lot more open. Ideas like f4, for example, are in the air. So f5 would also be a good move. You have many ways to do this, but king h1. So this kind of starts my topic with something really basic. Basically that the king on g1 is just not ideal. And you want to fix it. So this whole topic today is and actually have to do with the king more than anything else. So I've seen topics done like this where, like one of them, of course, the very famous uh, short game where he ran his king all the way to h6 to give checkmate, which is really cool. But I would say that it's it's not as common that kings just go rampant like that unless it's the end game. Um, so, but here it's more about like subtle king moves. So again, it looks like you have so many ways to continue the attack, but after king h1, with the idea of rook g1, it's just like a little king move to help bring pieces into the attack. Because the rook on f1 is one of those pieces where on e1 it doesn't really do much, there are too many pieces in the way. If f5, f4, maybe it does something, but the rook doesn't really do anything on any other square. So just the simple act of moving the king out of the way all of a sudden makes black's life extremely challenging. So black play tried the move uh, queen b4, and the players repeated once. They played rook b1, rook back to g1, and then queen b4. So repeating is one of those things in chess where you'll see GMs do it all the time, and it doesn't mean they're trying to draw, it doesn't mean they're trying um, to just see what their opponent's up to all the time. Sometimes you just repeat to gain time in the clock, sometimes you see if your opponent's going to deviate or play a worse move. Um, but you'll see it all the time, and it is, does not mean that they have any intention of drawing. Of course, black would be okay with a draw here. 
um, because their position is kind of sketchy. <laughs> but white would almost certainly not be okay with a draw. So the question now is how do you continue the attack and how do you deal with this queen takes b2 idea? So looking for some suggestions. So your idea is to play f5 and completely ignore it. This is not altogether stupid, right? Because you're you're just continuing your attack and you're claiming that this pawn is not so meaningful. The problem with taking here is that now you have a rook. Oh, oops, sorry. Forgetting I'm not on lead chess or chess.com. <laughs> um, you're attacking the rook and the queen. So your queen would have to move somewhere like this. And even here, like you just don't want to trade queens, right? So you can trade queens and play like this. And this is perfectly okay. But even here, something like bishop f6 might be annoying. With the idea that after takes, takes, all of a sudden this rook is open. Yes, I still like your position. After something like rook takes b7, it still looks terrible for black. But I feel like you're not checkmating here and the game's become a little unclear. I would also say that like if you have to play a move like queen d3, it's just very awkward. Um, so I would say that, again, you, you want to look for kind of different ideas here. Um, so I see the suggestion of rook b3. I think that's a good move. That's what was played. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have plenty of different options here. You could even play something more aggressive. But rook b3, I think, is just kind of nice. Um... And the idea is simply that you're not going to let him take on b2. You're going to force him to take on a4. And now you're claiming that the queen on b2 on a4 is less annoying than the queen on b2. Um, but there was something very interesting that Hizmetulin uh, saw here. And once again, it has to do with the significance of the king. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of showing you some games. So not every single move has to do with one of the one of the kings. But I would say that the king is kind of the focus of today's lecture. So whenever you're not sure on um, what exactly to do, it probably has to do with one of the kings, either taking advantage of the placement of one or improving the placement of another in a significant way. So white has a really, really nice continuation here, uh, which has very much to do with taking advantage of the king. Um, so while you guys are thinking, uh, just to give you kind of an idea, uh, one of the ideas I had for this lecture, because I, I kind of was, a, like a lot of my lectures I have prepared, I've given some of them before. Um, a lot of F lectures are a little bit more off the cuff. This is kind of one of them. So you always kind of hope it goes well. But one of the ideas is that the the importance of the king, I think, is something that's underestimated by a lot of club players in particular. Uh, that they don't think about their king or their opponent's king too much, because usually all the other pieces kind of get the action. But I would say in the end game, of course, the king is very significant. And the king plays a very important role in lots of positions, both in terms of whether it's weak or whether you improve it or whether it's strong. So just thinking more about your king, more about your opponent's king, um, can, I think, really improve the play of most people. And a lot of the times when I'm stuck in a position and I'm not sure what to do, I find that oh, I can improve my king. And so often, it's just such a useful thing to do. Um, so, so I'm seeing lots of one-move suggestions, which, as you know, I'm not as big a fan of as I am of lines. Um, but what else have you got here? Actually, I'm not going to show title games. Like, one of the things, like, I, I mean, I... He was one of my favorite players growing up, uh, but I, I try to, when I, sh when I focus on players, actually two of the games I'm going to show today in this lecture are from Hizmetul. I, I try to show games from players that people might not know as well, because uh, players like Tal, like almost everyone's have seen their games. Um, obviously, Carlson, Kasparov, like these are, they're just more common. So a lot of the times I, I'll show games of Carlson, I'll show games of all these people, but I, I do like to... Uh, 
um, sh showcase games of people who are lesser known. So I'm seeing a lot of Night F5. So I'm, I'm happy with Night F5. But what exactly is your idea? What is the what is the key idea? So keep in mind, guys, that after knight g3, you cannot move your b rook. Uh, this is something that's very important because your queen was going to hang. So. Tarly is the best attacker. He was up there. I mean, guys like Kasparov, I would not underestimate in terms of attacking. There are plenty of other good attacking players. But, you know, Tarly's games are always really fun, for sure. So the main thing I'm looking for from you guys is after knight f5, which is definitely a move that you want to play, what is the idea if I play g takes f5? That is the main thing I'd like to see from you guys, and I see it. Your idea is that you can play, uh, so knight f5 was played in the game. If g takes f5, you have the move rook takes g7 check, which is very strong. You probably have other ways to try to go about the win, but this is very nice with the idea that after king takes, you have check. And you're actually using the pin against black because now they have this queen that's loose. So again, a fairly simple idea, but you want to make sure you see it before you just throw a knight into f5, right? So the move b5 maybe was the best defense here, something like this. But after something, you can even just take this bishop off the board, play check, and then f5. And as you can see, black's king is in huge trouble. So I don't think black would have lasted very long. Instead, black tried the move e5. And uh, again, there are quite a few ways to try to finish this off. White took on e5 with the pawn, and black took with the rook. So how did Hismatulin finish the game? Um, and again, take your time, and I want a complete line. Again, it should not just be one move. This is something which I've been saying every day now, because I've been teaching... Uh, kids classes and stuff like that and all the time I'll see suggestions in the chat of just one move and almost never ever am I looking for one move I'm almost always looking for a move with an idea a uh, very specific variation so it's just something I, I tell people a lot so you can see one move but one move doesn't tell me anything you know um, one move maybe you saw really far ahead maybe you saw one move ahead and it's very rare in chess you don't want to look ahead and see what's going to try to ha what's going to happen um, but the reason I mentioned his Matulin is because I think he's a very interesting player to watch. Like, he was, in, in 2015, I think, he actually hit, like, 27, 20, or 30. So he, be he was a very legitimate player, still is. Uh, now he's in the lower 2600s. But he's one of those players where almost all his games, like, so many of his games are crazy and interesting. And he takes lots of risk. And he's just kind of a fun player to follow. But he's not one of the very top. He's not a Carlson. He's not a Caruana. He's not a Ding. He's not... A Nakamura right so it's like people aren't going to follow his games they're not going to think to look at his games but the fact is that he's still a very strong player and for most people the difference between him and Carlson like you can still get so much out of his games right uh, but I just find that they're really really interesting and he plays the kind of chess which at the top level isn't as common uh, guys like Dubov maybe are the closest but um, so he's kind of a player that I found really interesting to follow so uh, but it's one of those things where I like to show games by players who are a little bit lesser known. So I'm seeing some ideas. Um, so Tarun, your idea of knight takes d6 and knight takes f7, it's not bad, but I would say like knight takes f7, like I'm not obligated to take your knight, right? And I might be able to defend against the threat of knight takes f7. Um, now, I don't think knight takes d6 and knight, uh, is a poor move by any means. Like, this is, again, a position where you probably have many ways to win. But in general, I'm looking for something that's nice and clean and, and doesn't allow any kind of play and finishes the opponent uh, off really quickly. Uh, the player I'm talking about, Dino, is, is Denis uh, Hizmatulin, a Russian player. Um, but again, it's just the, the point is more that there are so many players who are kind of under the radar, but are still really interesting to follow. So I like to follow to show some of their games. The The game I'm going to show, um, the final one of his is actually one of the most, uh, one of the coolest tactical ideas I, I've seen. Like one of the coolest uh, mating ideas I've seen uh, that he came up with. So uh, we'll see that at the end. 
so I'm seeing lots of ideas here. Uh, but once again, I'm, I'm seeing like one move things, right? That does not tell me anything. Um, so yeah, you're, you're suggesting f4, rook e8, knight takes d6, knight takes d6. Knight takes d6 looks very solid to me. That should be good enough. Um, but just to give you an example, knight takes d6, maybe the queen comes back. Now I'm threading the knight. You could take on b7, I guess, and then rook c8, but the game's not over yet. To give you an idea, the game ended in, like, two moves. So the game did not last for another 5, 10, 15 moves. The game ended in two moves, pretty much. Three moves. Uh, he's Matula. And I'll give you guys the spelling here. So again, just kind of an interesting player to uh, follow. So you can play f4 first. Uh, but the problem with f4 may be that I can take on e4 now. And the idea is, again, I'm using your pinned rook against you. So uh, if you take, I can take here. If you don't, I might take on e2. So I'm not, oops, uh, I'm not saying that f4 is necessarily bad, but allowing rook takes e4 maybe is not the best idea. But also, guys, think, how do you decimate the king? Like, how do you make it so that it's really forcing? So knight takes d4 is just... Knight takes d6 is a super nice move. I'm, I'm not going to say that's a poor decision. But, again, the game ended in three moves. How did he finish him off much faster? I don't actually see the solution just yet. So I'm seeing ideas like bishop g3. Again, all probably okay. Um, you have a position that's so good that you have many ideas. But keep in mind, rook takes e4 is a resource if you just attack the rook. So I'd much prefer something a little bit more forcing. So I'm seeing knight takes g7, king takes g7, queen c3, pinning the rook. That's very strong, potentially. I guess I can move the king, though, and then unpin myself. So I'm not 100% positive it's that clear. So you want to look not a, you want to look at your tempo moves. You want to look at your um you know most the biggest threats you can make in a position. That's one of the keys to being able to uh kill this attack. And also look at what your opponent's key defenders are. So that should help you out. Basically, you want to eliminate a key defender you want to look for your tactics, for your tactical ideas, and that's going to be how you finish off um, someone in a situation like this. So Aryan, you're close with knight takes g7, king takes g7, queen c3, king g8, bishop f6, but you have a much better version of this. So again, guys, look for your more, um, look for your checks, look for your captures, look for things like that. Always try to get more forcing. Knight takes h6, bishop h6, I don't know that you're achieving too much. And once again, guys, it, it is a line, so if you're giving one move, you're probably not correct. Uh... Yeah, that's the one direction, no matter how many times I give it. Doesn't work. So you do start with knight takes g7. The king pretty much has to take, otherwise it is a free piece. Uh, and now? No queen c3, bishop f6. Huh. This is a very nice move. And again, it's due to the fact that you have this the potential for discovery. So the king cannot actually take this bishop. Play rook f3 check. Very nice. There's a really cool idea, actually. And I didn't spot this when I prepared the lecture. I just spotted it while I was waiting. <laughs> After king here, uh, what are your options in this position? Of course, you can take the rook and be winning, but you have a better move. So 
So rook takes b7, which is really a kind of a cool idea. Again, probably not the only way to win. So probably the queen has to go back to e8, but then you could take the rook or even not take the rook, honestly. Like the bishop on f6 is so good. I'd be tempted to just continue attacking, but you're up material with an attack. But the idea is if it takes the queen check, and now you have a lovely windmill. Now, you could be brutal about it. You could take on a7, but okay, obviously this is just going to be mate. The simplest method is just like this. And then either rook g7 or rook h8, something like this. So just kind of a cool idea. I didn't actually spot that when I was preparing this game. But rook takes b7 is uh, a very cool idea. And you actually give checkmate with that windmill. So very nice. Um, so in the game, king g8 was played. And now what move made black resign? queen d2 so the nice thing about the move queen d2 is that you're hitting the h6 pawn so taking this rook is impossible because that that mate will not be stopped and there's just no good way to stop it if a move like king h7 you can play rook takes b7 you can take the rook at any time um after a move like knight d7 i'm pretty sure you can actually just go about your business by taking on h6 if you wanted and then take play here uh i guess knight h5 bishop h5 you still live for a couple moves but you're, you're not going to live for any per extended period of time so in the game he just resigned after queen d2 but really kind of a brutal demolition uh just a really really nice game and again it, it, this was a very basic example but notice how both kings played such an important role king h1 was really important to allow the rook to g1 because it allowed knight f5 tactics to begin with uh f5 looked nice uh, but putting the knight on f5 and eliminating the bishop was just killing. And then notice all the tactics based on black's king due to the queens, right? So taking advantage of black's king position and improving your own king position and to, in order to make your rook nice. So again, this is a very small example of improving the king. The next two will be a little bit more, um, a, a little bit like more extreme. Not extreme, but like it'll be less subtle. Let's put it that way. Uh, okay. So let us move on. All right, so you get to see fish for a couple seconds. And now, because these games never end up in order. It's one of those things. All right, and here we go. Enjoy the fish. Forget the type of fish. I, I used to know all the types of fish, and I forget. But uh, anyway, nice fish. Hope you like them. So this position is white to move. This was actually, I hate to tell you, from a game of mine. It was actually played in St. Louis in 2007. Uh, 2017, sorry. <laughs> 2017 at the Fall Classic. Uh, a round-robin event that's held there quite often. And I had a very, very successful tournament there. I was able to win it. Um, and this was kind of the game that decided it. So it was a very important game for me as far as like trying to clinch the tournament. Um... And this kind of was a really big moment in the game. So uh, I thought that, like, my opponent definitely thought that their position was quite good throughout the game. And I was under the impression I was better for most of it. I would say that at some points they were okay, and then at other points I was better. But it was one of those where we really disagreed on what the position was about, just based on how we talked about it afterwards a little bit, uh, which is very common. Like, people have different ideas and positions and... But I would say that the main disagreement was that I had different ideas about kings and the king safety and the significance of that. So this position is white to move. And what would you guys do? And you probably have more than one good move. Again, it, when it's from a game, it's very rare. Like, okay, this is the only continuation. It happens. Um, but I think that uh, what occurred in the game, I actually found... Um, what I thought was quite decent. There's actually a little bit better, which I'll have you guys find as well. Um, but the question is how to proceed here. 
So, first of all, like, can anyone tell me what's going on? Because I think, like, summarizing the position is extremely important here. So I'm not seeing any summaries. I'm seeing move suggestions, which I'll get to later. But I'm looking for a summary right now. Like, what is going on here? What is important? Look to switch to the king side. Yeah, I mean, you guys are really focused on this knight g5 idea, which I think is really good. Because that's one of the major things, one of the major factors um, that I was looking for in this position. So white definitely has more space, that's significant. But I would say that normally, by most Slav standards, blacks traded off a lot of the queen side. So, you know, th things are liquidated heavily. So if everything trades, at least in theory, the d4 pawn should be weak. But the fact is that I think Black's King, especially against Knight G5 ideas, is just quite weak because there's no real way to fix it on the back rank. Um, so, of course, if I get a Knight to G5 and Queen to H3, it would be really good. But that's kind of not feasible. But just the idea of Knight G5 and playing against the back rank uh, is actually uh, quite strong. But the question is still, how do we proceed uh, in this particular position? Uh, keep in mind, we have pretty good pressure on the queen side as well. We don't necessarily... Like, I saw a suggestion somewhere for this, which, first of all, uh, I mean, after this, at the very least, they could even think about trading queens, which, I don't know. I don't want to say it alleviates all the pressure, but it definitely... And first of all, they don't have to take. They could try to go here and go after the b-pawn or something. Um, but even if they go for this this position, right? King takes. Now maybe they try to improve their king, play rook b8 to try to attack the b-pawn. It's not entirely clear to me that we're the ones who are doing that amazing here. I mean, yes, our position probably is decent, but uh, I don't know how clear it is. Let me put it that way. So I don't know about all these trading operations, especially when we're the ones who have pressure. Chileno and Bogota. Yeah, my, my mom knows. Don't worry about it. <laughs> she gave up long, long time ago. To be fair, though, honestly, I just have too much stuff. Like, too much stuff, but that's the way it goes. Okay. So I'm seeing suggestions for H4, I'm seeing G4, but again, I'm not just looking for a move, I'm looking for a very clear idea. Yep, yeah, it's a good uh It's a good summary. I like that summary. So h4 prevents rook b4 due to tactics. I would say that's probably true. But I don't think black's obligated to play rook b4 either. Moves like rook b6 for example, I think are possible. Um so you don't want to necessarily assume that they have to do that, right? Ah, but your idea of h4 is that you're you're trying to prevent, uh, you're trying to threaten rook takes a7 due to check and knight g5 check ideas. Yeah, I definitely looked at h4 type moves, um, but I, I believe that there was a way to defend against it. I'm trying to recall. Ah, uh, so h4. So there's no threat immediately, or is there? Yeah, yeah, there is. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, I think h4 is actually perfectly good as well. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, I'm trying to think if I was worried about this. So here, and if rook takes a7, rook takes a4. Uh, rook takes here, and then... I don't know, this looks pretty good. Some kind of check. Yeah. Ah, I think I looked at this. This is what I looked at, I remember now. Something like this. And the idea is that if here, there's a check, and then they take our rook, which is kind of annoying. I still thought this was good for white, but... Um, I ended up choosing something else. But as mentioned, like, these, uh... Yeah, you could bring your queen back. But again, you, you can do something more forcing uh, as well. Um, but okay, I mean, there are, there are many ways to go about this. But the first thing I saw, and I saw this mentioned a bunch, is that this knight on f5 is always kind of annoying. So I decided to play g4 to face to uh, shoot the knight back. Um, so a lot of you mentioned knight g5 as an idea. And this is a very strong idea. So you're trying to do all this back rank stuff. And you also have this idea of rook f3. I think I missed this idea in the game and the f7 pawn is extremely weak so this knight g5 move would be really really tough to answer I, I don't really have a great suggestion for black here honestly um but i came up with a slightly different idea and i don't think it's as accurate as knight g5 but i think it do it is very very strong and puts black under lots of pressure uh, and this is not an idea i saw suggested in the chat so i'll give you guys a few minutes So rook c7 again is possible, trading the rooks, but I don't know if trading the rooks necessarily serves a great purpose for me. I like my rook on c3, so I'm not so certain I want to actually trade those. Uh, I have not played in Qatar. Uh, a couple of people I know were going to, but uh, I, I have not played there. So I do see a suggestion, and one of them, and it has to do with kind of the topic, and it was one of the reasons why I thought of this game, because the Black King, of course, has great significance in this game. The, if the Black King were not weak here, probably Black would have a great position, because d4 is weak, um, etc. But one of the issues is that I, I was always getting checked on the back rank in a lot of these lines. Uh, queen b1 check, queen e4. So I didn't think there was a huge rush, so I simply improved my king here. And again, I, I think knight g5 was better. But after king g2, my opponent went into a very, very deep think here. And one of the things I noticed was that they became increasingly uncomfortable. They were kind of okay with their position before this. But after the move king g2, which is a very simple king move, I think that they were very, very unhappy. And the reason for this is because after king g2 and then at the next move king g3... Black simply has no great moves. And the problem that they have is that eventually I'm just going to improve my pieces further, maybe try to play knight g5 at some point. And even in the end game, their position is just going to be very lousy. And it's because I simply just improved my pieces. Is it a grand mastery move? I don't know. I mean, I would say, though, that one of the things you'll find when you look at GM games, there are often times when GMs take time out to, say, improve their king. Or, or tidy up their position a little bit. Whereas a lot of other players don't do that. And then it's like by magic, all of a sudden, say if a GM's playing a player who's not as not as good or whatever. Um, again, a lot of the times it's not like they're always great moves or that 2300s aren't capable of playing these moves. But it, it, GMs are known for it where it's like, well, we like to play little tidying moves. So we tidy up our position a little. So then when a mess breaks out, our position just looks nicer. We have pieces on slightly better squares. And all of a sudden, it's like tactics seem to work. And it's like the reason why they work is because we've improved our pieces. Housekeeping moves is something I've said. It was something uh, my old coach um, in New Hampshire when I first started out used to say. Housekeeping moves. 
And they're the kind of moves that I find are really useful because they just make your position easier to play, even if they're not the most accurate moves all the time. Uh, the way you have to do it is you do it this way. You ask yourself if your opponent could do something extremely strong uh, or if you could do something extremely strong. But oftentimes in positions, it's hard for both sides to improve. And then housekeeping moves just come into play because they just make your position a little easier. Um, so that's kind of the idea. So, yeah, I mean, h4 is, again, a move. Um, it's it's kind of hard to say because, like, honestly, there are a lot of good moves here, right? Like, it's not like there's just one good move. Uh, and I want to make that clear. Like, if you guys are like, oh, I wanted to play g4 or h4, I wanted to do it differently, it doesn't mean your way is bad, right? Your way could be just as good, maybe better than mine. Uh, it's more like I'm just showing you kind of the way I think about the position, which is that, again, black's very tied up. So I want to improve my pieces before I start attacking them. So my opponent actually played g5 here. Which is a little bit of a panicky move, but at the same time it's very understandable. Because they want to get out of these back rank mate threats. They want to make sure that their knight can have the g6 square. They want to make sure their king can get out. So g5 is actually not objectively probably the best. Although it was already a difficult position. But it's more the result of you panic because you realize, oh, I'm tied up. My opponent's just making these housekeeping moves, these improving king moves. I have to fix my king. I have to do something drastic. So you'll see this happen a lot, actually, I, I, at least in my experience. Like, I'll play kind of a nice little improving move, and my opponent will be like, ah, and they freak out. <laughs> and it's it happens all the time because people panic when they realize, oh, I don't have easy moves. So the question is what to do here. So you're asking what g5 does. Again, it gives the king for some squares and it gives the knight some squares. So taking on g5 is definitely a move. Uh, I was worried about some lines with knight g6, I believe. Um... And there were some other variations too. Uh, there was another one, for example, after here, rook b4. There were some complications as well. Um, I don't want to get into it too much, but basically the idea is that after rook b4, uh, if I try this, the idea is rook takes, queen e8 is mate. So you have to take either with the queen or take the queen. But after this, I thought that there was this and then rook g4 is a problem. Um, something like this was what I was looking at. And at the very least, it looked messy. Like, maybe even here, there's knight f3, and then king h3. So, I, it's been a while since I played this game. I don't remember all the details. Maybe rook b4 was not the move I was worried about. But I think, like, my logic was not so much whether I could take the pawn. Like, it definitely was... But to me, taking the pawn was a loose move. If I take the pawn, d4 is loose. I have to worry about rook b4 takes d4. There was some line, actually, that irritated me. It wasn't just general concepts, but... Um, I also thought, do I have to take this thing right away? Is it moving anywhere? Because if f6, taking on e6 was possible. And I can tell you right away that if your opponent plays a move like g5, they have in mind what to do against knight takes g5. But you play an improving king move, king g3, and all of a sudden black still has the same problem. I don't have moves. What do I do? And the specific purpose of king g3 is that now on knight g6, there are not even any checks. You don't even have knight f4 as a check. So it just makes your life that much more annoying. Uh, this game was played in 2017. So that was kind of my idea, king g3. Um, that the g pawn's not going anywhere. And I'm slowly improving. However, there was... You can't just do it without calculating at all. I don't mean to imply that I'm just making improving moves and not thinking. Of course, there's some calculation involved. And it kind of shows after this move. So rook b4, what do I play as white? And again, I'm looking for kind of complete variations once again. If f6, then the e6 pawn hangs. That's usually the black's problem. So if f6, I can always play rook takes a6. So once again, looking for full lines.
So again, this this rook c7 idea, I keep seeing it, but it just trades rooks. I don't think you're actually achieving that much. Um, and for example, then you actually have to be careful. Like rook c7, I don't want to say be careful, but after something like this, I could consider a move like queen c1 with the idea that now if you try to take my knight, I can play queen f4 check and take here and then take your knight. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful about those ideas, but it's more just, I don't know why you want to trade those rooks. Um, queen a5 I'm seeing as a suggestion. It definitely makes some sense. Uh, queen a5, maybe a move like queen b5? I'm not sure. Uh, I think maybe, maybe just rook, rook back to b5 or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, rook back to b5, and if queen c7, the rook hangs. I don't know. Definitely something to consider, though. I've seen the right move. Uh, I've seen the right move, but I have not seen a variation accompanied. So, so ah, very very nice. Um, so very good job, Davina. Rook takes a7 is correct, and I saw the suggestions of this, but I didn't see complete lines. So very simply, if takes queen takes here. If takes on here, which is what happened in the game, then I take back. And if rook takes, it's very important that queen e8 check leads to mate. Because here, knight takes check. So the main idea is that if king g6, then takes and mate. If king h6, then queen h8 and mate. So it's kind of a nice little mating pattern. I think that somehow my opponent was under the impression that this didn't work unless I put a pawn on h4. Or I had a knight on g5 already. But this is still a mating pattern. And, all right. So, uh, so nice job. Yeah, and, and again, guys, like, I, I'm not going to see all your variations, right? Like, the especially when there are lots of lines going. Um, but, uh, so if I miss your variation, like, it, it's just something that can happen. <laughs> it's not a personal thing. Uh, but again, we're not, we're not really trying to race to the right line, right? We're trying to, um, we're trying to calculate accurately and do everything. I would say that I would value like a very accurate line over a line that's spit out fast. So we're not really trying to race each other. It's more about being accurate and trying to figure things out here. So queen takes a7. Queen takes b4. Knight g6. Um... Yeah, and here it's just kind of the position falls apart because I, w I take the g5 pawn and now there's just too much. So here, I mean, even the end of the game, which was kind of funny, like even this position, it was largely about the king. I make sure my king is secure and then I actually just try to weaken his king. And this is something that people forget. Like when they're up a pawn, they often think, okay, let me just get the queens off. Let me just do this. But a lot of the times making your opponent's king feel the heat, making it so that their king feels bad, is actually a good way is good technique because you make it so that they have to defend against attacks and that's kind of what happened right just to show you what happened queen c1 i'm gonna go quickly because i really want time for that last example it's a really cool position uh queen to b7 h6 g6 and again i'm just trying to attack their king now i'm not going to mate their king most likely but it's at least a good distraction. So I play b4. Again, I'm just trying to push this pawn. My queen threatens to come to f6. So the knight has to go to a passive square. And now I just use my b pawn, right? And this is, again, kind of the trick, right? I'm not necessarily going to mate. Like knight g5, maybe I can eventually mate uh, if I can get that move in. But for the moment, I'm not really trying to mate. I'm actually just trying to distract. So the knight has to be on h7 in order to guard everything, and then this b-pawn just can't be defended against. So basically, you play on both sides of the board. You let them know that the king side's weak, and then you just use your extra b-pawn. So, rook c4, b6, and again, here, there's not much to do. He plays f5, and then I break through over here. So queen a7. So once again, Using the fact that the king is weak yeah, to finish off the game. And then here, and he resigned. Because, yeah, here there's rook c8 check is an unstoppable threat. Uh, because this queen uh, will give mate if they take with the queen. So again, I mean, just an example, though, of how, how significant the kings were to the result of the game. 
Ah, uh, oh, Sam showed this game. That's interesting. Um, yeah, Sam, Sam actually uh, was a student of mine like a long, long time ago. Uh, <laughs> so it's funny, like, uh, I, you know, we sometimes use each other's games and lectures and stuff like that. But uh, but that's funny that he used this game. But yeah, the main point is just the the king was such an important piece because because black's king was weak. Black structurally black was fine, but because the king was weak, it proved to be just a indefensible position. And improving my own king made it so that he was under pressure to do to lash out because just the act of improving my king made his position really annoying. Oh, it wasn't this game. Okay, <laughs> he's shown the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, I have seen him use my games as an example, but he actually used one of my losses in his book. I was really mad at him about that, but no, <laughs> it's uh, it happens. Uh, okay, so that was that, and then you get to see Fish once again as I open up my last game for this lecture. So this one, yeah, this was a really incredible example. Some of you um, may have seen it. Um... I don't know. I mean, it, it became kind of a famous game at the time, but it was a little more obscure. And it's, again, played by the same player, uh, Denis uh, Hizmatulin, against Pavel Elyanov. This was in the European Individual Championships 2015. And this was, I think, the on the way to uh, Hizmatulin becoming like a 2,700-plus player. But in case you missed it, I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture that he's a player who uh, was very just very interesting to watch with his games, but you might not know about him because he's more obscure. He's not a Carlson or a Caruana. He's not as high rated. So, uh, but he's a very interesting player to watch. So he got this position, and I remember looking at this game, and I was thinking, okay, I mean, maybe heading towards a draw. You know, not not anything too crazy. The black king's a little open, but the white king's kind of weird. The pawn on d3 is pretty strong. Maybe black could even try something. But I thought that this game was probably heading to a draw. And the way that this game ended was absolutely outrageous. Um, like, again, one of the most incredible uh, endings to a game. Thank you, Francisco. I uh, appreciate that. So th the question here is, what should we play as white? So we're facing this D-pawn coming up the board. Um, our C-pawn looks like a goner. The king at H6 at the moment looks fairly safe. So what do we do? Yeah, Queen C1 definitely probably will defend. Um, I don't know, though. I mean, I would be slightly worried. Like, sometimes after a move like Queen C1, um, I don't know. Queen B5 is, is maybe a move. It, it's also possible, by the way, to take play here. You have to go to D1. And then, for example, take this pawn and go here. And I get a rook behind the pawn. I mean... Probably you can draw this. Like, I would suspect that this endgame is a draw with best play, but you're still the one who maybe has to work. The main thing that's saving you here, not saving you, but making it easier, is that this king on h6 is kind of out of the game. So it's very unlikely you're ever going to be in danger here. But these are all kind of ways to try to draw. Um, I don't know, though. Queen c1, it definitely looks like you can run into trouble playing this way as well, so I wouldn't say it's super clear. Um... But anyway, uh, Queen C1, of course, is, is a playable move. But again, Hizmatulin was thinking to play more aggressively. So that's a really cool line. Um, so if Rook C1, D2, Rook takes Queen, it looks like you, you've uh, blundered, right? Because Queen here. But the problem is if you take the Rook... Well, first of all, I guess you could take the rook on d1, but there's also even c7. But yeah, actually, 
this is even just simpler um so that's not very good but i don't have to play d2 right for example if i play the move queen b5 with the idea of d2 check next move this actually looks kind of nasty so king g1 d2 um so divina queen h8 for queen f5 8 hope um you have the right idea and in fact that is what was played in the game rather than trying to draw with moves like queen c1 or rook c1 white actually plays against black's king and claims you know what the king on h6 is actually not that safe so queen h8 again i'm not saying it's better than queen c1 or rook c1 but it's kind of a cool idea that you're really trying to actually prove that you're the one with the initiative here despite really only playing with your queen because the rook on d1 is so passive so it's a really cool idea uh, that was played in the game. So in this position, there are two kind of possible. So in the game, queen c2 is played, which looks very tempting. You're basically saying, look, I'm going to take your rook. I'm going to play d2. Uh, it looks like a very strong move. But believe it or not, queen c2 is actually a huge mistake. Uh, so we have a question. Hold on a moment. So after rook c1, queen b5, what happens if we push the pawn? Uh, if you push the pawn, I'll play this move with check. Uh, king h2, I'm probably going to take this. Yeah. Take here, and then rook c6. And you can make a queen and get your material back. But you're not going to be better here. I'll take your queen, for example, and I don't know, queen c5 is a move. Uh, but you're not really better here. I'm the one with the pass pawn. So I would say that this is, again, a way to try to draw, and maybe you can. But you're only trying to draw there, and you're probably on the worst end of it. So uh, Queen H8 is an attempt to try to do a little bit more. But it, it has amazing tactical points behind it, because it looks like a mistake after a move like Queen C2, which is what Aliana played. Uh, so Black actually should play Rook takes C6. And here, there are many ways to draw, but just for example, after rook here, uh, one kind of funny line goes like this. Check, you take here, you check, and you take the rook. But because black's king is open, there's actually no way to avoid a perpetual here. Um, so this would, with, this would be a draw with best play. For example, if you try the move f6, I could even play h4 check, and all of a sudden the black king has problems. So you'd have to go back, and this should be a draw with best play. But once again, this is, it at least forces uh, Black to accept a perpetual. It draws the game immediately. So I think that he definitely didn't want to play one of these endgames where maybe he's a bit worse. So in the game, Queen c2 is played. Queen f8 check. King g5. And again, this was one of those positions which was absolutely crazy to me. Um... And really, really cool to watch. It was definitely not something I anticipated here. I thought that black was maybe better or maybe even winning. Um, but this was definitely quite a shocking moment. So queen f6, uh, queen f8 check, king g5. And again, I'm, I'm looking not just for a move, but for some variations. So what ideas do we have here? I'm seeing exclamation parts, exclamation points thrown out there, all this other stuff, but I do not see any lines or anything that would convince me that something is correct. King g1 saves the white king, but it drops a rook with check. Uh, if you want to play a move like that, you need a follow up. Queen takes d1, king ta king to h2 is not, I mean, that's just, a, that's nothing. That's just what the force moves. Oh my goodness, I'm seeing way too many exclamation points. F4 is most certainly a move. And keep in mind, guys, if you've seen this game before, it's going to be a lot easier to find the win, obviously. However, the key to knowing that to figuring this out is not just knowing the move, but this is um, like it's not just about knowing the move, but seeing the ideas behind it is what's really difficult. 
So yes, if you've seen the game, you may know the move, but you got to figure out the ideas behind it. So f4 is definitely a very tempting move. And this actually shows you kind of the importance, I believe, because I'm pretty sure that black can play this now. And the problem is you can chase this king all the way up, but actually you're the one who's going to get mated here. Because <laughs> the king at h2 is nice and secure, queen e2 checks a threat, and it's actually a completely safe king, which is really funny. So this would be an example of uh, the way this can go wrong. And I don't really see any improvement to this. If you try to play king g1, I could even, I could, if I take the rook, you play here and maybe you're actually going to mate me. But I don't take the rook, I ignore you and I improve my king. And now g2 is going to be a really big problem. So I'm seeing suggestions of h4. Uh, this move is definitely worthy of consideration. So I guess the question I would have now is what happens if I play king g4? With the same idea, I want to improve my king. Ah, there's f3 and takes d6 check though. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, so I'm going to have to play king h5 probably. So what are we doing here after king h5? So you can play g4 check, but now I think I could take this. And I'm not exactly sure what your follow-up is now. You could check on, on c8, but I can even play f5 there. So I'm not so sure after king here d takes g4, you have anything in particular. Um, looks really good. Um, so once again, uh, this position, white to move. And again, I've seen the line. I've seen the move. Um, but there's the move by itself is meaningless. You need an actual variation to show why, why it works. Because it's an amazing move. But what exactly is the idea? So the move played in the game, because I have to finish this up, <laughs> is king g1. So again, I saw this in the chat, but once again, you need explanations. You need reasons why it works, because you're just hanging a rook with check otherwise. So black did, in fact, take on d1 with check, which isn't even the best move. The best try, it turns out, is this move rook d5, which is really hard to find. Uh, obviously, this is computer, but the idea is then you improve your king. If queen takes c6, you can play queen g7 and... Then you have this really nice move e4. And again, you're, you're just trying to go after the king. And if king takes e4, you have rookie one check winning the queen. Um, but notice how you're not going to play g4 check because that would allow king e4. So instead you play king f6. And then here e4 is very strong. So the idea is that if the rook moves, you play queen d6 check. You take... And you get this kind of weird endgame. You have to block with the rook or else you get mated. And then rook f3 is quite strong. Notice how you do not play here because of takes on f2. So rook f3 here. And again, it's not even clear you can necessarily win this. Black's going to kind of use the b pawn to distract you. But at the very least, you'll get a position where you end up taking on f6 someday and taking the b pawn and you get a queen ending him up a pawn. Uh, the odds of you uh, actually... Actually, winning this are like at least somewhat reasonable, right? But again, this would have been by far the best defense. Um, this rook d5 move. So, so uh, all right. yeah, I have to end this unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there are lots of crazy lines. the the main The main thing though is just the idea that improving your king can be worth like hanging a rook sometimes <laughs> it's kind of a cool thing because this isn't like the shorts thing where he puts his king on h6 that's really awesome by the way but this is just a subtle king move and all of a sudden black's king just by the queen and by the king used to help against the king
gets mated. So the way the game concluded was really cool. I'll show it. Queen takes d1, king here, and you're actually just mated. He took here, queen e7 check, they just repeated, and then he took. So the idea now is f4 check is absolutely crushing, um, and you're just going to try to give mate. So Aliana finds an amazing defense, actually. If you try king h6, for example, I'll check, play g4 check with f4 coming, or queen h6, it's going to be mate. If queen e2 immediately, you just check and check, and that's going to be mate as well after king h4, queen h6. So rook f6 is what he tried with the idea that you sacrifice the rook in order to pin the g-pawn. But here, Hizmatulin found a really accurate continuation to the very end. He checked, played here, forcing the h-pawn up, checks on e5. And once again, the kings are just so important. The only reason white's not mating by force immediately is because the pin. The only reason black's in trouble is this king on h5 and how it can't go anywhere. If g8, if g5, you actually just keep forcing the king up and then you just win, uh, which is kind of cool. And after king h4, you check. This happened in the game. And then this move f5 is very strong. So the idea is that on g5, you play queen g6 check. So he had to take. And now once again, the king's just in a box, in a coffin, whatever you want to call it. g3 is coming if the queen moves. Otherwise, queen takes h6 check. And leading to mate. Um, so again, I mean, this was all really, really, really complicated. Um, probably should have bedded in my time better so I could show that a little bit closer. Um, but definitely a uh definitely a really really cool game and, and one that's worth exploring but it honestly i could spend a whole lecture just on the sub variations of this but the main thing to take away is that a lot of the times in positions when you're not sure what to do or you're trying to attack and it doesn't work or you're unsure of like who's better in a position look at the kings uh because oftentimes the kings dictate oh who's better and why and also improving your king or making your opponent's king worse uh, even in a subtle way, can often make the difference between having a good position and doing, uh, you know, having greater problems. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the lecture. I'm going to do another one right now, uh, showing the games of the week. Uh, so stay tuned for that.